Welcome, No DQ Galaxy, to another episode of What's NXT. I am, of course, your host, the Rated R Reviewer, Stefan Osborne, joined, as always, by the General Jerry Slaughter. Good evening, wrestling fans. Tonight we are reviewing NXT for January 9th, 2019. And let me say, as much as I hated that two-hour extravaganza where they just played all these old matches and recapped all these old matches and feuds and... They named off all the, the nominations for Superstar of the Year and Tag Team of the Year and everything of the year. And there was a screen just full of superstars <laughs> to pick from, to vote on. <laughs> and a two-hour show that we spent an hour and 47 minutes waiting on a match that lasted six. And was was it the worst reviewed main event yeah. we've ever had on Winston NXT? Coming off of that last week, this show was fucking awesome Th this one came this one had nxt come back like fiercely this was the show we should have gotten last week but oh, god yeah this is yes. the show we really should they should have had one hour of all the nominations and then this show last week yes this was awesome um but before we get into that I just want to say that we are going to have an NXT UK predictions video for NXT UK TakeOver Blackpool. Uh, that should be going up the same day as our NXT UK uh, review show, the NXT party, goes up on Friday. So the day before the event. And I don't know if it will go up on Saturday night after uh, uh, Blackpool or if it will end up going up Sunday, probably early. But uh, we are going to have a review show as well. I wanted to do it live. I don't think we're going to be able to do that. No. Um, it'll be a great time of day to do it. Yeah. I know that. But I don't think we're going to be able to do that live. I only have like 20 subscribers on my channel. Um, maybe if we can boost those numbers to a point to where people actually want to see it live. Um, if you want to actually check out the channel that I'm able to post these videos onto. Um, that's how it goes. I post it onto Aftermatch Wrestling. That's all one word, A-F-T-E-R-M-A-T-C-H, wrestling. Um, I post it there, and then uh, Boss Man for No DQ, he gets it from there, and he posts it on to No DQ, where, which is where most people see it. Mm -hmm. um, but if you guys want to go subscribe to Aftermatch, we might just do it live. That would be fun. Um, other than that, we're going to do a review show, and there are rumblings. Yes. Um... We might have the king of No DQ himself on the big screen to review NXT UK TakeOver Blackpool. Such a long title. God, it's a fucking mouthful. <laughs> <coughs> that is not confirmed, but um, we're trying to get that done, and I think that would be really cool. It'd be the first time that we'd have him on the show, um, and especially to review the inaugural NXT UK pay-per-view, that would be awesome as well. Mm -hmm. But that is NXT UK. We are talking NXT America. Yes. And it may not seem this way when we get to the end of this show when we actually go over the main event. But this show really was such a breath of fresh air from last week, for one. But on its own, this was an awesome show. Oh, yeah. We had two farewell matches, more or less, with the two called-up superstars. We had some great video packages and an unexpected tag match that just br brought glee and joy to our yes. hearts. <laughs> a lot of joy to my heart. So, we start off this show with Johnny Gargano. Always a great start, because, like, that's our pick for Superstar of the Year, anyway, when it comes to... Anything involving um, NXTs was Johnny Gargano. Nobody had oh, yeah. a bigger year than him. He was he was at the center of the best storyline, the storyline that has driven NXT for probably the last year and a half to two years. Um, Gargano has been in the center of all of this because even when it was him and Champa, I mean Champa was injured for a lot of that. You know, like yeah. half of that feud, he was gone on injury, and so it kind of centered around Johnny Gargano making a name for himself as a single superstar awaiting the return of Champa. So Gargano comes out to the ring and he basically says that, and this is a promo, this is not going to be a match. I did not expect to see J Johnny Gargano, Tommaso Champa, Aleister Black, or uh, Ricochet in a match during this episode. Probably not in any episodes to come. They're probably saving them for NXT TakeOver Phoenix. Yeah. To, 
basically. But uh, Johnny Gargano comes out to cut a promo and he says, success is measured in wins and it's championships. Uh, also, he goes on to say that the whole everybody starts chanting for DIY, naturally. And he says, no, that was a one-shot deal. That will never happen again. I'm still, I, I still want to defeat Champa. He still yeah, wants to do that. He says, Champa's still a piece of trash. Yeah. And he calls him a piece of trash. Mm -hmm. I wrote that in here somewhere. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he says, what happened in that cage will never happen again. And Champa has a title, the title, yeah. that Johnny Gargano still wants. Yes. Before this, he had mentioned that he was going to be a champion. Yes. He said, you know, yeah, success is measured in wins and championships. He said he was going to get better, he was going to get more wins, and he was going to get a championship. Yep. Or so, become a champion, but he didn't say NXT champion or NXT championship. But even he had to admit that Ciampa pretty much had a good idea for going after Ricochet. Well, he kind of, they, they wove this in so good without yes. him having to acknowledge and to... Uh, make the challenge himself or anything like that they wove this in because champa after making his promo was it last week or the week before week before the week before yeah there was no champ there promo. was no last week we're not going to acknowledge <laughs> last week anymore <laughs> so champa in his promo had had basically said that johnny gargano should get a shot at the north american championship off of the back of his win in the steel cage match yeah and so johnny gargano doesn't challenge him he, he says that Ricochet, after hearing Ciampa say that, ended up responding to Johnny Gargano instead of responding to Tommaso Ciampa. Yeah. And so he takes exception to that. And basically before he gets a chance to say anything about Ricochet, Ricochet comes out. Wearing weird, some of the weirdest bowling shoe type things that they have ever seen in my entire He's life. wearing a sweet suit. Yeah. This, this blue suit makes him look very uh, dappish. Dapper. Dapper? Yeah. Da, da, no. <laughs> yeah um, Dapper, there you go. Yeah. Well, that's that's the thing, though. I, I say he looked more like a heel because of, because of it, but Maybe at the same time, bit. like, yeah, he actually is dressing like a champion, which is cool. So. He, Except for the shoes. It, the, the Look sh like brown leather bowling shoes. Uh, I, 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 could, I couldn't stop looking at it. This is wrestling. We're commenting on his shoes. But seriously, if you saw the shoes, you would notice they kind of just stand out. Yeah. You just see a shot of him in the ring, and there's Gargano in his in his uh, warm-ups with his sneakers on, his bright red sneakers, but then you got the blue suit, the very dapper blue <laughs> suit with those weird brown leather bowling shoes. Uh, Ricochet comes out, and he's just like, look, if you want a shot at this title, you just got to ask, man to man, right up front. But the question is, are you going to fight me for it or take it from me, man to man, face to face or are you going to jump me from behind out in a parking lot so that brings out Tommaso Ciampa who basically gets cut short by Johnny Gargano who, who tells him this has nothing to do with you yes man Johnny Gargano is so great yeah and even then um yeah he just tells him more or less to shut the hell up it, it, it's like we're, it's like we're talking here just Keep your mouth shut. But, since you're out here anyway, yep. since Champ is out there, who decides to make their opportunity to say something but Aleister Black? Somebody else we weren't really expecting to see at all. But so that, that, that intro to his music, not really the music, but uh, that, and then the lights go out, and then there's Aleister Black, huge Aleister Black up on the Tron. Because um, now Tommaso Ciampa sees, or was heading out, so he sees him on the Tron. And he basically says, why are you worried about Johnny Gargano? You should be worried about me. Yes. Because at uh, TakeOver Phoenix, I'm going to make you fade to black. And then the lights go out again, and then... Alistair Black is standing behind Ciampa. I mean, who didn't see that coming? <laughs> I didn't. Well, Ciampa didn't. But he, <laughs> he turns around and he realizes real quick... And he starts running over the announce table, running. Oh, he takes apart the almost the entire announce table, takes off that like the cover portion and everything. Just 
anything he can do to escape Aleister Black, he's just running. <laughs> now they tease the suplex or something of some sort. Yeah, they're trying. They're trying to. He tried to set up for a suplex on there, but then like. Uh, well, Aleister Chumpa Black set it up. Yeah. I thought maybe Gar Gargano might reverse it, but or no, Chumpa he just. Did, yeah. Or yeah, sorry, Chapa might reverse it, but he just slithers out and goes run it again. Throws some set over to, to block Alistair Black for a second. Just scurries off, and uh, that's all we see of that. Then we the action goes right back to the <laughs> ring. Meanwhile, in the ring, like Ricochet is just watching all that go down. Like yeah, yeah, right, because Johnny Gargano's right there. He's not he's not behind me or nothing. Smack, super kick, beautiful super kick, Be not like. F f fell just like a redwood. <laughs> it was like one of the stiffest falls that they have ever seen. But like the whole kick in general, the yeah, this was sweet chin music. Yes, super kick by Gargano onto Ricochet, and like he said, Ricochet tum tumbled like a redwood, just straight flat down, <laughs> just out. Great sell. And, and and even then, like Gargano just stuck around in the ring just for a few minutes, slid out. And even after after that, Ricochet was still having trouble getting up. He is, yeah. he was completely discombobulated. And he was pissed too. But we'll find that out later. That ends that segment. Great way to start the show. Yeah, that that, that was brilliant. So before our first match, we get a uh, a tweet from Regal from William Regal, who announces at NXT Takeover Phoenix, we will see the Undisputed Era, that is uh, Kyle O'Reilly and Roderick Strong defend the NXT Tag Team Championships against... The Returning War Raiders. Oh, yeah. Hanson and Rowe. Mm -hmm. That is Ray Rowe. Ray Raymond Rowe. Rowe. So, our first match of the night is one of the matches we talked about. One of the superstars that's moving to the main roster. We have Bianca Belair, and she's going against Nikki Cross. Finally! Yes, we finally get some closure in this in this feud because and I'll tell you up front, we get closure. We get a pinfall. No dispute no no disputing the pinfall. There was no shenanigans. There was no heel tactics or anything like that. This was a match. This this was a clinic as well. It, it was, was a great fucking match. I highly recommend this match. We didn't know why this was opening the show though. Yeah. Because this is the culmination of three attempts at a match to get a fall mm -hmm. that didn't like disqualify both of them. I think they, we got they, one they D, should, double DQ and we got one double count out. They, they call tonight a double main event, but at the same time... Bullshit. Yeah, this, this, should, have made this, 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 this should have been the main event of the show. So we have the undefeated Bianca Belair, the EST of NXT versus... Nikki Cross in what is probably her final match in NXT. Who do you think is going to win? Who's going against Shayna Baszler? Who needs the rub? You know, who who needs the momentum heading into TakeOver that, Phoenix? That's, that's the thing that kind of bothered me about is the fact that, like, yeah, Bianca is already in my head to win because you, you have to... Did not take away from the incredible no, match, though. You, you're going to have the streak versus the title at the uh, at the pay-per-view. So. I mean, they had some trade-offs. They were going back and forth. You know, you got Bianca Belair, and she's really good. And you got Nikki Cross, and she's really crazy. But I started making notes when Belair gets Nikki Cross off the top rope in a gorilla press. Yes. And just drops her behind her. But she holds this gorilla press for a while. And it, it, as small as she looks, it is impressive looking. She she even had the like <coughs> look on her face like what this is nothing and then just drops behind her follows it up with a standing moonsault. Mm -hmm. So you have so you have the strength and you also have like the agility which is always present with Bianca Belair. She gets better like each match. There's and then always... she she gets more innovative. We saw her she transitions an abdominal stretch into a backbreaker and me and him just just fell apart here. We were loving this. Because we start talking about Roderick Strong and how he probably just jizzed his pants. Because <laughs> this backbreaker was something he probably never thought of. Maybe he's done it before. Who the fuck knows? But she drops her with this, and I'm just like, I, I think I clapped. Yeah, you did. At that point, because I'm just... Something about Bianca Belair impresses me more and more every single time I see her it, in the ring. It's, it's because each... Except for last week when they flashback to like eight months ago. Yeah. 
Well, well, that was also eight months ago. You see how she progressed yes. with, with each, each person? To see where she was eight months ago last week mm -hmm. in that match that they replayed from uh, Chicago. So maybe it was more like seven months ago. But uh, to see where she was then to the match that we saw with Nikki Cross tonight, amazing. Yeah. I, I think that's one of the saving graces of, of that show was the fact that we got to see how much she's actually grown in in the year that she's been like doing her thing in NXT and her undefeated streak and it's been great. Also with this match, we didn't see any real shenanigans with her like usual the long braid. We didn't really see that. She went for it at one point, but even then that was thwarted and we never saw the braid come into play. Yeah, Nikki Cross kind of ducks out of the way of the whip, the hair whip, and mm -hmm. then she never goes for it again. She doesn't really end up needing to. Um, Nikki Cross looked good in this, too. She had this uh, reverse DDT for a near fall. She uh, she counters this running frog. I have never in my life seen a running frog splash. <laughs> it's probably been done. Uh -oh. I've never seen it. Bianca Belair... Goes for this running frog splash, and Nikki Cross gets the knees up. I I went as far as say is like you know, her husband Montez Ford. Like anytime we see both both those two, either one of those two matches, we're gonna see something a little different in each one or something spectacular. They probably so just train and get creative together. Yeah, they're, they're like probably half their sit, they're half their moves up. they figure out in the bedroom. They're yeah. just doing some <laughs> freaky shit with some swings and shit, and then they got they got posts on the bed. They're just like trying to do some stuff, and they're like, "Oh, that would be a great move in the ring." So something I really liked about it, like something Nikki Cross did in the match was the um, Finley maneuver, as I call it, where like Bianca like got slid out of the ring, got well, trapped. She, yeah, she the, swung her from the apron underneath that ring apron. Yeah, it, it, that ring that skirt. never that that never gets old. That never gets old for me. Well, it doesn't get old because people don't do it too often. No, I think. Um, I think if everybody did it, yeah, it would get old real quick. Yeah. Um, there was a point where we thought Nikki Cross was going to win. I wasn't sure. Because I was actually pretty sure she wasn't because it was pretty early on in this match. And you could just tell by the pace that they had set that this was not the end of the match. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty good at calling where the end of the match is. And I think two or three times tonight in these three matches, I paused it right before the final move, before we actually saw it. And I'm like, yeah, this is it. I'm making my final notes. What was the final move? Pinfall, underlining the victor, and he's like, "I'm gonna laugh if you unpause it." And he reverses it or some shit. I'm like, "Dude, no, this is it." Yeah. I think that that was what you said at the end of the first match here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Nikki Cross goes for the purge, her swinging fisherman's uh, neckbreaker, and she hits it. So we think she's gonna win, but no, Bianca Belair rolls. Out rolls of the ring. right out of the ring. But this takes the match into scene two. Outside of the ring. That was fun. Yes. Just, I didn't think it would be as, uh, as, as fun as it was, but at the same time, I didn't think it was going to be as suspenseful as it was. Because there was times while they were outside where I'm like, fuck, this is going to end in a double uh, disqualification, or this is going to end in a, a double, double count out. And I'm like, man... We're not even going to get the finish to this match that we deserve before Nikki Cross gets called up. But no, they there was one spot. Uh, it was after Nikki Cross had gotten on to B Bianca Belair for a, like a sleeper hold. Yeah. And Belair drops back onto the uh, the rampway. And that just looked painful. Oh, yeah. After that, even then, Bianca saw trouble getting into the ring, and Nikki yeah. was just laying there. They both just barely beat the 10 count. Yeah. They were in at 9. They they, they both slid in kind of like the, weirdly the same way, but Bianca in one corner and Nikki coming in from the other side of it. But they kind of looked, they both had the same expression on her face, like, holy shit, we almost, I almost lost. <laughs> yeah, and once they both finally get back up, because they almost got counted down for 10 now, here but they finally both get back to their feet this is where or maybe that was late this is where the the match breaks down yep this and is i break call down. it the breakdown yeah mm -hmm. like like in a rock song or a heavy metal song this is the breakdown they both get to their feet and they just start wailing on each other mm -hmm. just a fist brawl fisticuffs for lack of a better word and uh bianca belair goes for a spear i guess onto nikki cross in the corner and Nikki Cross gets out of the way, 
And so Belair goes shoulder first into the post. Nikki Cross rolls her up. This is where I thought maybe the pinfall would be, but I still didn't think Bianca Belair was going to lose. Yeah. So, yeah, we get a kick out. And then uh, too many cross bodies, man. Yep. I was about to say, Nikki cross body kind of, kind of screwed that one She'd up. She'd already hit two or three cross bodies in the match successfully at this point. But she goes to the top rope, she goes for the crossbody, and Bianca Belair dodges out of the way, so she lands the hard way on the mat. And, like, with no hesitation whatsoever, the second she saw Nikki Cross pop back up, had her hooked into that um, torture rack and right into the um, KOD. Yeah, what, what I was calling the ESTKO. Which, which I think is a more appropriate name. I, I think I think that works too. But she calls it the KOD, the Kiss of Death. Yep. I like the name better. Let's get rid of the, the acronym or the initialism of KOD. Let's just call it the Kiss of Death. Because she's got that big smooch print on her shirt anyway. Yep. You know, she, she sports the kisses. So the Kiss of Death is fine. Don't call it the KOD. Just a little and, and, side and, note. And that, that's the, Other than that. And that was the end of the match. That match was awesome. And I would have loved to have done that match for the main event. Yes. And got to rate it. But no, our main event is going to end up being the other person that's getting called up. And they're probably final match on their way to Raw or SmackDown in EC3. And we're going to see him versus Adam Cole. But that'll be at the end of the night. The the thing that surprised me really about the end of this match is that we didn't see Baszler or... No Baszler. Yeah, we didn't see Baszler. Even just show up. They're, they're not even building this match at this point out. Like, they're talking about it a lot, but there's really not a lot of action going on. I mean, we'll it. probably see Baszler next week, but we sh we, we're only two or three weeks out. I think we only have two more episodes of NXT before NXT take over Phoenix. The only story behind this match right now is Bianca is the, uh, still undefeated, and she won that f Fatal 4-Way match. There's really no, nothing else going on there. At the very least, they should have brought out Baszler with Jessamine and Duke, and they should have just stood at the top of the ramp. St stood there, look intimidating. You know, Baszler maybe he holds up the belt. And then next week, we hear from Baszler. Yeah. Something. But well, maybe they didn't want to overshadow Nikki Cross's final match. With a Baszler angle. At the same time, I think it would have been, like, I think it would have been actually cool for Baszler, uh, Duke, and, and you know, Bashir to come out and try to attack, and then Nikki Cross actually helps her ward him off, almost like a sign of respect. Yeah, but... It, we didn't get that, though, but at the same, no. same, same time, awesome fucking match. Awesome match. Um, up next, we've got a... a promo for the Street Profits. And at first I thought this was going to be a video package, but no, it just starts out with their Twitter thing, and or not Twitter, their Snapchat thing. Yeah. And we're like, oh, Street Profits, awesome. And we get a Street Profits impromptu rap. Yeah, we get, we get an impromptu rap, which was pretty awesome, and then they just go into their t talking about how this is going to be their year, and we're hoping to God it is. Because they deserve all the success in the world, like in NXT, and they they've been there. What they said three years now, uh, I believe so. In three years, and they haven't won the championship yet, and they they started naming off the other tag teams that, and we it hasn't been registered yet, but it seems like Street Profits haven't lost. Um, um, I think they've lost before. I would I would say if they were undefeated somebody would be on commentary would be mentioning that at some point we would have noticed um <laughs> I, I suppose weird. we could go back and look yeah which we, would have been, which would have been weird because you know bianca belair like is, always is also about, uh, also undefeated and she is uh montez ford's wife um so he was doing the rap we had uh dawkins uh, yeah angelo dawkins doing the beatbox pretty good beatbox he had some hum in there which I don't know if you know, it's very hard to do when you're beatboxing. I myself, I'm probably not going to demonstrate that for you, but I am a pretty good beatboxer. I'm a drummer. To me, to be able to beatbox is to be able to drum without a drum set. And I know I could beat on things, tap on things. Um, dashboards are really great for drumming <laughs> on the drumsticks. They've got a perfect bounce to them, but don't do it. Um, I ended up cracking my mom's dashboard in a couple of places back when I was a teenager. 
and then that was my first car so I got the crack dashboard that I cracked so that was fun but anyway so sad life aside <laughs> Angelo Dawkins is a pretty good beatboxer mm -hmm. And I, I'm not huge on Ford's rap, but luckily they kept this short. Yeah. Um, the promo itself wasn't all that short, but the, the essence of it was in 2019, the Street Profits are going to start opening doors. Yes. And they said doors have been locked and they tried a door to something outside of Full Sail. I don't know what it is, some store or something, maybe a gym. It looked like a movie joint. set. So they go to open it and it's locked and I'm like, oh cool, they're going to like kick in this glass door, like break the glass. like. <laughs> No, they just moved on to the next door that happened to be open. And uh, it was a double door, so the other door might have been locked, I suppose. But um, it's, I don't know about the metaphor. I don't, know, I don't know about all that. But it was at least fun and entertaining. I was just happy to see them. That's true. And we are going to see them, I believe, in action next week. Next aren't week. We? Yeah. I don't think they mentioned who they're going to face. But speaking of tag teams, this was the best part. As good as that first match was, and like I said, should have been the main event. That match was better than this match, but for me, this was the best part of the show. Yes. Because I didn't see this coming, and this was just great. Fabian Eichner and Marcel Bartel, who are NXT UK, well, they're a tag team in NXT UK. They, are, they have competed in singles matches on NXT, but never as a tag team. But we have gotten into these guys on yes. NXT UK. If you don't watch NXT UK or you don't watch the NXT party, um, it is getting to a point to where you are now missing something special. Yes. And Fabian Eichner and Marcel Bartel are something special. They are they are a tag team. It looked like it was going to be something hastily thrown together just from common enemies. No. These two work perfectly together. And they look like a tag team. They've got... Matching jackets, yes, but not completely matching. Like uh, Fabian Eichner's got the collar, Marcel Bartel doesn't. Yeah. But they're like these baseball jackets, but completely matching. They've got matching gear, uh, trunks that is, and boots and whatnot. Just black, they, solid black. It's all you need, they, man. They look like heels. They look like your traditional heels. What makes it even better is the fact that um, Fabian pose. Eichner's from Italy. And then you have like um, Eichner, or Fabian Eichner's from Italy, and then you have Bartel from Germany. So you have like the um, the the whole foreigner heel angle, pretty much. We're better than you, American type thing. So you've got the European. Do they call them the European Union or yes. something like that? Which is funny because if they ever got a shot at the tag titles, it would be EU versus UE. No wait, yeah, EU versus e UE. Yeah, Euro Ooh. European Union versus Undisputed Era. Yeah, that would be fun. So this match was. Honestly, it was it's weird to watch because I want to watch Fabian Eichner and Marcel Bartel look awesome, but they're the bad guys, right? Yeah. So the good guys who, okay, I will tell you what I think they said their names were because they didn't get an entrance, they didn't get music, they were in the ring when Marcel Bartel and Fabian Eichner came out. We got so Stanley we know Watts. they're the jobbers. We got Stanley Watts. We're pretty sure it's Stanley Watts. The other guy, maybe it's Huntsman, and they were saying it oddly, but I'm pretty sure that uh, that we heard Cuntman. Yes. Cuntman, <laughs> maybe, maybe it's different when it's a TH. Cuntman and Watts. That's what I'm going to call them, because that's a much funner name than Cuntman. Who didn't get a first name? I can't... I don't think he got a first name. No, he didn't. Oh, I wish they would just... A banner or something. Give us something to write down. Good grief. Oh, we, we knew these guys were doomed when they didn't have, like, the, the whole tag or anything for under their names or anything. We, there's nothing. They were already in the ring. They were ready to get their ass kicked. <laughs> I mean, as fans of the heel team of Bartel and Eichner, you know, of course we want to see them win. But... You're 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 giving nothing for us to think that maybe they could lose when not only does the the other team not have a entrance or or names or anything, but they don't even look like a team. No. But let me tell you, individually, these guys look pretty good. Yes, they did, especially Watts. The Watts actually nailed a couple of great moves, but not enough. <laughs> no, um, we saw this. 
this was toward the beginning of the match when really I got invested in this. When I saw Bartel, he does this double chop to the neck. Oh yeah, that double chop to the neck was just sick. Suddenly I was on the edge of my seat. I was like, whoa. Because I'm, I'm used to Bartel having this really serious impression, but I've never seen him deliver a power move like that. Yeah. But he didn't stop there. Well, even before then, Bartel was doing some wear down holes on Kuntzman. And, um, like, at one point, he just slapped Kuntzman right on the side. Like, and for the rest of the match, you just saw that huge welt. It looked like William Regal's chest back in the day from when he used to get chopped all the time. That's how red it was, and that's how painful it looked. So even then, I'm like, I, I could, I, I couldn't continue the match after that. <laughs> well, from everything that we saw out of Kuntman or Kuntman and uh, his partner Watts, Watts, yeah, um, we. It looked a couple of times like Watts was actually going to be able to pull some offense off, and, and he hit some incredible moves. But this was a showcase for Eichmann and Bartel. And Eichner. Eichner, I'm sorry. Yeah. Eichner and Bartel. So we see one of the moves that me and Jerry have seen on NXT UK that we liked as a possible finisher. Uh, the spine buster by Eichner into a soccer kick off the ropes from uh, Bartel, they didn't get the pinfall there, but uh, I guess that's more of a signature move, one of those setups. Yeah. We get, oh my god, just this, just all of the really great spots belong to Bartel and yeah. Eichner. Bartel takes one of the, I think it was uh, Cuntman, yeah. off the top rope, or maybe it was the middle rope, but he, over his head, lawn darts him into Eichner, Eichner, who grabs him in a vertical suplex and drops him with the brain buster. And that was all midair too. Like like he did not touch the ground in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, we're literally talking about a law dart into a brain buster. Yes. And it was suspended for a second because he, he, he didn't catch him with his head under his arm. He caught him with his head over his arm. Mm -hmm. But held him in midair so he could move his arm around his neck and drop him for the brain buster. Fucking Wow. Like, these guys are amazing. And Eichner is just a power... He doesn't look like that kind of a powerhouse. I mean, he's built, yeah, but he doesn't look like he a Batista. He, he, he proportions it out well is what he does. He actually hold, like gets the opponent in the right position and everything, and after that, it's all about weight distribution. So I would like his, uh, his power to that of Batista. Yeah. And he's nowhere near as big as Batista. No. Or maybe he is, and we just can't tell. <laughs> but he, they do their finisher, which they are getting better at every time. This time we had Bartel centered. Instead of it being like a, a, a backdrop, it was a More last that. ride powerbomb from Eichner into a German suplex with the bridge. Hold for the three count. Eichner and Bartel. These guys are fucking awesome. He he almost chucked Watts a little too far at that point. I think Watts made made like eighty five pounds. <laughs> so yeah, uh, Bartel came down quicker than he probably should have because Watts was so lightweight. He probably should have held for a half a second before coming down. So he came down a little low, but that was probably for the benefit of uh, Watts because Bartel ended up taking most of the uh, weight on his back first. Oh, and something else we hadn't mentioned was the basement drop kick from Bartel. Oh, that because, was good. Yeah. Because Eichner actually held him in place on the on the apron, so this this way, like, there's less room for error for Bartel. Yeah. Which... So when Bartel hits the basement drop kick, if you've been watching our NXT parties, you know we're critical of this because he hits it very weakly. This was not weak at all. No. He nails him with this to the point to where you can hear it slap. Yeah. And uh, and Eichner helps the fall. He does fall off of the uh, ring apron onto the, the ground, but it's more controlled because Eichner was there to make sure that it was. Uh, so this was brilliant. This was a brilliant fix to that problem. And I'm actually amazed that they figured out the same problem that we saw yeah. and fixed it. But I'm glad you mentioned that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, these guys look great and I look forward to seeing them. I am totally gay for Eichner they're, and they're, Bartel they're, right they're, now. They're, they're poses, 
their tag team maneuvers. These guys are a force to be reckoned with. Just their, just as, as singles, their per personalities as single superstars, their moves as single superstars. But you put them together, and it's just like, wow. They're, they're, they're the NXT's version right now of the bar, is what they are. NXT UK's version. Well, NXT now, too. It looks oh, like yeah. they're going to go for either one they're of the belts they can get at this point. <laughs> they're, uh, if, they, if they become crossover talent, much like Dakota Kai was there for about a month, month and a half, yep. that would be cool. More opportunities I, I, to see them. I, I think I think that's what they're trying to do. I think they're trying to build them as a um, a force to be reckoned with and a tag team that's going to be able to challenge for the NXT UK belts or the NXT title, like just the NXT titles here. So up next we have Kathy Kelly outside, and uh, she's trying to talk about all the people that got ejected from the arena. Mm -hmm. I think Johnny Gargano got ejected. Uh, Alistair, or maybe Black, Alistair Black, Black and Champa. Okay, yeah. so they got ejected, blah, blah, blah. But she sees Ricochet leaving. And this is what we alluded to earlier. Ricochet's pissed. You can see it on his face. He's pissed. And she's he wasn't, like... He wasn't showing many pers much personality in the actual in initial, like, uh, in-ring segment we got earlier. But this one actually showed more of the Ricochet we wanted to see anyway. He's ready to just take Gargano out. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I met, made a comment to, to Jerry during the opening of this show, and I'm like, Ricochet is not a mic guy. No, he isn't. He, he's not a promo guy. He's incredible in the ring, but put him behind the mic, and it's like, all right. He knows his lines. <laughs> <laughs> he delivers them. So, But it's very pissed. wooden sounding, but it's usually something after like that. So. But you get him in the mindset to where he's pissed off, and now he's going to cut a promo, and this I liked. Yes. He uh, cuts a promo, of course, on Johnny Gargano, and he's like, I told him all he had to do was ask me face to face, but now, after him fucking super kicking me, you know, I'm going to get his ass no matter what. I don't care if William Ringle okays this, makes this a match, whatever. I'm coming for Johnny Gargano. Yep, he's, he's, he said, um, he's coming for my belt, and I'm taking him out. <laughs> so there you go. Then we get a recap from last week and the match. <laughs> the, I was going to say the main event, but no, it was the match last week. The match. The match we waited an hour and 47 minutes for. Um, that, of course, was Matt Riddle versus Cassius Ono. Oh, this coming off of the back of their uh, match at NXT TakeOver, what was it, Brooklyn? It was one of those. Oh, it was NXT TakeOver War Games. War Games, there we go. NXT TakeOver War Games. That six or seven second knockout that led to the match that we saw last week, and we got the recap of all of it. Just so we could cut to Keith Lee being interviewed by the other interviewer. Because Matt Riddle is out of commission for right now. They're, they're saying he's not medically cleared to wrestle after a vicious attack from Cash Zona. So while Matt Riddle is out, Keith Lee basically is going to call out Cassius Ono next week. Hopefully we'll get a match. Yep. That ought to be a fun match. I think we've already seen it, but whatever. Now there's purpose. Yeah. The, the defending the honor of a friend. So now we come to the main event. EC3 versus Adam Cole with all of the Undisputed Era, all three of them some bitches. Um, and for those of you who don't know, that is Bobby Fish, that is Kyle O'Reilly, and Roderick Strong. They are all at ringside. At first we thought the ref was going to kick him out, but no, he was just shooing him out of the ring so the match could get started. Yeah. And I had two lines left on my page before I had to start a new page. And I managed to get all of it. On two lines. I was about to say, there really wasn't a lot going on in this match. There was more posturing and gloating than anything else. And nothing really spectacular to make real mention of. No, and the Undisputed Era, of course, got involved in the match. They had the distraction. But that wasn't until the end of the match. And this was like a 10-minute-plus match of just stuff and things. <laughs> I mean, they had their spots, and it was... This match was honestly more memorable than the last match that they had. That I think there was like two spots and it was over. Yeah. And it was like, what? This match at least, you know, did stuff for a while and like it wasn't it wasn't not entertaining, but 
just stuffing things. Dude, they you were accounting spots, while the match was on. I was paying bills, man. <laughs> I didn't have any other room to take notes. So I, was just I didn't see anything really spectacular out of either one of them. The match didn't really... It, it didn't really do anything for me, is the thing. It made the fact that we had just gotten done watching two phenomenal matches, and we had a great opening segment, but... For, for some reason, Adam Cole and EC3 to me just kind of felt stale. It really did. So so the end of this match comes with the affirmation uh, Undisputed Era getting involved. They jump on the apron and get to distraction. Out of that, Adam Cole gets a super kick, uh, and then he gets the last call to the, the enziguri to the back of uh, EC3's head. One, two, three. Yeah. So there was two reasons to have this match. One, EC3's going away going to be his last match cool two the after match yes which is something i pretty much was calling for after the, they made the announcement for for the um take for takeover anyway was yeah. we get the return of the war raiders because ec3 is getting the shit kicked out of them <laughs> yeah you got four on one and suddenly the war raiders come out and they clear house yes in a badass way, like just row, just like, like wheel kicking, just like, just psh, like, oh my god, wow, row. But then fucking Hanson, like Hanson goes for a power slam on somebody, and then Row stacks somebody on top for a power bomb, a power slam, power bomb. Yeah. Not two dudes doing one, a move to one guy, one guy doing that to both those some bitches. Like, well, even, wow. even even then, Hanson at one point had um. Kyle O'Reilly, and he ripped off uh, Kyle O'Reilly's Undisputed Era tag. I think it was like his dog tag day he wears. And then he just nails him with the, nails him with that, that kick. Just off to his face. And that's, the, that's the only saving grace, I think, for the main event for me was the aftermath where the War Raiders showed up. So, I don't know if I should give it away or not, but I'm pretty sure the War Raiders are winning the championships at NXT TakeOver Phoenix. Yeah, that, 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 that doesn't shock, that wouldn't shock me at all at this point. Well, I mean, this would be the second match. They lost the first title match it cleanly. And their, their performance, cleanly. Their, and their performance at War Games was just phenomenal. Yeah, so I think this is where the War Raiders take the tag team titles in, what, two and a half weeks? Yep. At uh, TakeOver Phoenix. So, that concludes the main event, and sadly, it was not Nikki Cross versus Bianca Belair. Yeah. I would much rather rate that match, but around these parts, we rate the main event, the last thing to go on the show. So, given the general's five-star rating system, Mr. Slaughter, where do you rate this main event? Oh, I don't, I don't want to listen. Two and three-quarter. Like, it, like, basically... It's fair. Yeah, I was about to say, with the... The match itself, we knew it was going to be pretty much a farewell match for EC3. We knew that going into it. This is a big, this was a big goodbye show and a good hello show to people we pretty much were missing, and introduced the um, world to Fab Fabian Eichner and um, Bartel that haven't seen them. God, but, that was awesome. That yeah. that would have even been a better match to rate than this one. But this match really didn't show us any dif anything different out of Adam Cole or EC3. It just seemed like they were just going with the motions and that was it the aftermath of the match is what, where the story really goes and we're not really rating that though so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with two and three quarters I am going to agree with you the match was very middle of the road that's two and a half stars you know out of five and give it an extra quarter of a star for the aftermatch yes. that builds toward the tag match at takeover so I mean, you said it. I mean, th this match was just nothing special. So, so now we at least know three matches for the um, takeover in Phoenix. Yep. But we have um, actually we we know four. Oh, that's all. That's all four matches we'll probably get. Well, for, hopefully for, we for, get five, but you know whatever. For, like well, usually, four usually. was okay for takeover uh, war games because war games itself was a very long match. Yeah. But the normal takeover has got five, so we're bound to see at least one more match pop up in the next coming, what, two weeks? Yeah, so we have Tommaso Ciampa versus Aleister Black. We've got Johnny Gargano versus Ricochet. 
which hasn't been confirmed yet, but we know we're going to get <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, right. Bianca Belair versus Shayna Baszler and the War Raiders versus Undisputed Era. So who do you think that who do you think is getting the final match? The fifth match. Uh, I hate to say it, but probably Matt Riddle versus Cassius Ono again. Huh. Oh, there you go. It, it's it's all it's all scoring if he's actually cleared to wrestle, but unless do, do you see anybody else in in that match? Unless we see Cassius Ono find a partner, and then so it'll be Matt Riddle and that would Keith involve Lee somebody versus... liking Cassius Ono. <laughs> and who likes Cassius Ono? <laughs> no one. <laughs> so that brings us to the end of this show. Absolutely. That's two and three quarters for the main event for both of us again. We agree. I think this is the fourth rating in a row that we've actually agreed on, if you include NXT UK. So we'll see if that continues. We are actually getting ready to watch and review NXT UK episode number, what, 23? Yep. And I believe we will be doing the review with uh, James Hebert. James Hebert. So I hope you look forward to that. We look forward to a spot of NXT with you. Um, Meanwhile, next week we will be having, again, what's NXT, and NXT UK should be one episode, hopefully, next week. But between that, as we said earlier, we will have the predictions show that we'll, we will be recording tomorrow night. With four possible guests. That is our hope. We are going to have the Brady Bunch heads up on the big screen. We'll have four people, which makes six total, which will be in No DQ's largest predictions panel to date for an NXT UK show. That's right. So we're trying to make the inaugural NXT UK pay-per-view something special um, in our own little world, in our in our no DQ world. So we hope you'll join us for those. And like I said, we will be doing a uh, NXT UK TakeOver Blackpool review episode, hopefully with the king of no DQ himself up here on the big screen. Um, cross your fingers for that. So if you'd like to be up on the big screen and do a review of NXT UK with us, that is our NXT party, you can get a hold of me on Twitter. Just go to nodhu.com slash Stefan. That's S-T-E-F-A-N. Or if you just want to go to Twitter and find me, it's at Stefan R. Osborne, O-S-B-O-R-N-E. The R stands for restricted. You can also find this gentleman on Twitter at no DQ general and also a group on Facebook known as arm bar That's all capitals a r m b a r exclamation point find Stephanie or I on there we'll go ahead and add, add you into the group and if you don't have Facebook you don't have Twitter and you can't slide into our DMs um, just let us know down below in the comments how we can get a hold of you and hopefully have you up on the big screen and review an episode of NXT UK with us um, other than that I guess that's the end of this show. Absolutely. So uh, thanks for joining us for this week's episode of What's NXT. We look forward to seeing you next week and hopefully for the NXT party. I am the Rated R reviewer, Stefan Osborne, joined as always by the General Jerry Slaughter, and we'll see you in NXT time.